So I've finally gotten a chance to play New World, the long-awaited newest release from Amazon Studios. Yes, that Amazon Studios, the ones with, shall we say, a rather scattershot approach to game development. Amazon made quite the entrance into the video game scene, hiring quite a number of high-profile developers and executives from other studios, and putting quite a bit of money into ensuring the team had whatever resources they needed to get their prototypes off the ground. The problem is that historically Amazon has not been all that great in the past about getting their games beyond that prototype-esque stage. Their failures in recent years have been mounting both in number and scope, culminating this past year with Crucible being arguably their biggest debacle in recent memory, closely followed by the preemptive cancellation of their Lord of the Rings MMORPG, which was barely halfway through its development cycle, based on what information Amazon had provided about the game's development up until that point. It was common knowledge that the game wasn't anticipated to release until sometime in 2023, with at least one closed alpha or beta sometime in 2022. So needless to say, there was a great deal of very reasonable concerns surrounding New World, not helped perhaps by the fact that New World as a game had experienced a rather troubling amount of changes in terms of its scope, its content, and arguably its direction and intended audience in general. New World went from being this Planet Side 2-esque, clan-only, massive PvP game, to being what we might think of as your more traditional MMORPG, except with a more PvE focus, but still keeping many aspects of its original PvP design. Now, I've never been all that much of a PvP player. I simply don't get that adrenaline rush, nor really embrace that community aspect of large-scale clan warfare. It's just not something I enjoy, in all honesty, and as a result, isn't something I've really cared about getting good at or defining myself by. I'm far more of a PvE-oriented player, so Amazon's announcement that they were trying to find some kind of middle ground or bridge between PvE and PvP, but with PvE taking the more prominent role in the game, was definitely welcome news to my ears. Even though that probably wasn't welcome news to some of the game's more original fans. So as of now, I've put in about 14 hours into the game. I'm almost level 16, and ideally I'm hoping to be about level 20, which is currently the halfway point by the time this closed beta comes to an end. New World at launch will have a level cap of level 40, although I fully anticipate that to rise later in the year as Amazon begins putting out DLC expansions as well as seasonal updates and events, both of which I strongly anticipate them doing. If there's one thing we can all probably agree on, it's that Amazon likes getting money, and there's no way I could see them putting out an MMORPG complete with god knows how many online regional servers, and not finding some way to continue generating money out of their players, beyond just a paid cosmetic storefront or something similar. It's worth noting that the progression made during this beta test will not be transferable to the launch version of the game, so if you're hoping to carry over your characters, your loadouts, your equipment, anything really, I'm afraid that certainly will not be the case, and while a small biased part of me would prefer to keep everything the way it is because I don't envy having to repeat the same grind that I've already done, I completely understand Amazon's desire to just start everyone off on the same footing on day one of the official launch. Closed betas are inherently an exclusive thing that not everyone is going to be able to participate in, and it would be unfair to divide the player base into your typical haves and have-nots. Also, to be honest, Amazon's banking on the fact that the more hardcore MMO players will be incentivized than put off at the prospect of starting all over again. MMO players are no strangers by any means to the prospect of grind. In fact, when done right, grind ends up being one of the most crucial aspects of the game. But I'll revisit that point later. But at the end of the day, I feel like I've played enough of the game where I feel like I can give an honest and detailed preview, or first impressions if you will, of what I've seen so far. For anyone watching this video weeks or months from now, and possibly complaining about how I didn't talk about some post-launch update, or want to complain about the bugs shown on screen, I do want to reiterate that this is the beta. This is not the final product, and I do look forward to doing a full review when it does release in full. You'd be surprised how many times I have to respond to comments asking me why I didn't talk about certain updates or content that wasn't available when I first did my video. Despite all my best efforts, I cannot see into the future, so just take what I say with a grain of salt, knowing that anything and everything can change as the developers ramp up production ahead of the game's official launch on August 31st. As surprised as I am to admit it, New World is actually a fairly competent MMORPG, definitely one of the better ones I've seen on the market in recent years, which, to be fair, isn't saying a whole heck of a lot, since most MMORPGs released in the past decade tend to be either mind-numbingly mediocre, like Star Wars The Old Republic, Marvel Heroes, or APB Reloaded, 
Or on the flip side, we've seen others that were just downright terrible, like the 100 plus MMORPGs and MMO light games we've seen originally released in China as well as other non Western markets before being ported over to the West. There's a reason why only a handful of them ever reach any sizable audience. MMOs are different than most other game genres in that the time investment required in order to make any substantial progress is far higher than almost any other genre currently on the market. So players correspondingly tend to be very selective about what MMOs warrant their time and energy to grind through, understandably enough. Also, it's arguably been a while since we've had a AAA-produced MMORPG from an established and credible Western publisher like Amazon. Although again, given Amazon's history as a game studio, I'm using those terms very loosely indeed. Also, I don't mean to imply that non-Western MMO developers and publishers aren't credible or can't be, but rather that while in non-Western countries, there are a vast number of MMOs, and of that count, the majority end up being hot garbage, produced simply to make a quick buck while hardly investing anything into the game's future potential. So let's start off by talking about, well, the start of the game. New World does a surprisingly good job of guiding the player through all the important mechanics, including questing, combat, resource gathering and usage, inventory slot and backpack management, trading, etc. Arguably one complaint you could make, and I wouldn't really blame you, is that the game does drag out the tutorial elements. You basically spend the first two or three hours on somewhat of a guided tour that can either be endearing or aggravating depending on how you look at it. Personally, I think it went on just a bit too long. I think some of it could have very easily been consolidated to save time, but it's not too bad to the point where I would consider it being a notable design flaw. The story, which has traditionally been one of the core components in any MMO, isn't really all that prominent here. There's a bit during the opening cutscene and the tutorial, but most of the story elements in the main game, aka anything past those first two hours or so, mostly just comes in the form of brief NPC dialogue when you accept a quest or complete a quest, or by finding these collectible lore notes scattered across the world. I'm not saying either of these methods are a bad ways to deliver storytelling in an MMO, but they shouldn't be the predominant, bordering on exclusive way to do so. In a world with different, distinct towns, cultures, and factions, all of the NPCs in them, for the most part, feel very samey from a narrative perspective. On a related note, let's talk about the questing system. Having good quests or not having them is one of the main things that will either exemplify a specific MMO title or prove to be one of the leading contributing factors in its demise. And to put it bluntly, this is one of the areas that New World does seem to currently struggle in. You've got a number of different types of quests. You have trials, which are certain story quests that you can only unlock when your character has reached a certain level and done certain preliminary steps. Those are usually pretty good. Then you have your typical side quests and faction quests. Now, for those later two, I dumped them in the same category because in many respects they are very, very similar. I feel like they are so similar I could almost be forgiven for calling them identical, at least in concept. Nine times out of ten, any and all faction quests or typical side quests you'll pick up within the world will revolve around one of three basic concepts. Number one, go to a predetermined area and kill X number of enemies. Number two, go to a predetermined area and kill X number of animals and harvest X resource or material from them. Or number three, go to a predetermined area and find X type of collectible, usually hidden in small treasure chests. That's it. You might occasionally have a more memorable quest, like go to X area and kill this boss whose name is, insert name here, but in the vast majority of instances, it's usually something from the first trio of categories. And when you've invested about 10 hours into the game and you're still arguably spending the majority of your time traveling on foot back and forth between these quests and back to the city to turn them into the NPC that you got them from, this only reinforces the feeling of deliberately having my time wasted. Speaking of which, <laughs> let's talk about how fast travel works in the game, because I think this is probably going to be a very divisive opinion of mine, but fuck it, we're going to go with it anyway. I'm not a big fan of how fast travel works, although I can respect the ideas behind it. Once you've spent a bit of time in a town, and keep in mind I'm using the terms town and city interchangeably, you unlock the ability to fast travel to it from wherever you happen to be in the world. There are some exclusions, of course, but generally speaking... Now, as we all know from the Greek expression, there's no such thing as a free meal. There is a cost to using this time-saving ability, and that cost in this case, ironically, is time itself. The second you arrive at your destination via fast travel, a timed cooldown is set into place. And this wouldn't be a big problem, in my opinion, if it wasn't for the fact that the cooldown length is one hour long. One hour long. This is, in my opinion, extremely excessive. 
I really don't think there is any justifiable reason for why the time limit is set to an hour, when it could easily be set at something far more moderate, like say 30 minutes. A 30 minute cooldown I think would be far more acceptable, and given how it would somewhat be equivalent to the average amount of time completing a pair of quests in roughly the same area, it seems like a very practical limitation. You can teleport to town, turn in your quest, run out and complete two more, maybe engage in combat with a couple of enemies, and before you know it, fast travel is available to use once again. This would, I think, make the prospect of going out into the world and completing quests a bit more satisfying knowing that you don't have to, once again, repeat the backtracking, and instead just get to instantly travel to town and claim your rewards first. It should be said that there is a secondary means of fast travel, although similar if not higher restrictions apply. You can find these specific altars at certain points across the map. Once you locate them, they stay marked on your map just like any other discovered location would. You can spend a certain amount of in-game resources to fast travel to your chosen destination. But again, the cost compared with the inconvenience of going out of your way to find one of these fast travel points makes them only a poor substitute for the lack of consistent access to the main form of fast travel. Let's talk combat, since that's arguably a big selling point with any MMO. The combat in some ways is decent, but in other ways is arguably unbearable. With a wide assortment of weapons to choose from, which I'll give them credit for, there are no hard lock classes. Players can equip any two weapons in their loadout, which is a change since initially I had read and seen videos referencing how players would have three weapon slots. My guess is that this was likely changed in order to force players into being a bit more mindful in terms of how they choose to engage with the enemy. Strategy now plays a bigger part in fights as opposed to merely just spamming a bunch of weapon abilities one after the other, flipping between all the weapons you have as quickly as possible, as your other weapons recharge, creating an endless loop of powerful weapon abilities. At least that's the idea of how this is supposed to work, to avoid that. But it doesn't seem like, as a mechanic, that's been very well implemented at all. Weapon attack animations don't always connect with the intended target. I would go so far as to say in many instances, maybe 30 or 40% of the time, I can still miss my target entirely and still land a direct hit, even a critical headshot. For the life of me, I cannot tell if this is an issue with the animations or the hitboxes, but it feels like at least a little bit of both. It's one of those things that sounds like a small problem, not worthy of criticism in a video, but it's one of those small problems that, when it appears so frequently in the same exact context, you'd be hard-pressed to ignore it. The vast number of intrinsically detailed skill trees for each weapon type is very impressive and offers a lot of opportunities for players to adapt their weapons to their preferred playstyle, while still allowing them to unlock everything without arbitrary restrictions. Not only do you have the traditional attribute increases you can spend points on while leveling up, like health, stamina, charisma, etc. Each unique zone in the map offers its own upgrades that you can unlock by doing quests and activities within it, as well as defeating AI enemies and crafting within it. Say what you will about Amazon's ineptitude as a publisher, but these developers working for them clearly are aware of how outdated many of the core MMO RPG mechanics are and how other games have failed really to improve on these foundations for the past 20 years. And these guys are actively trying to enhance and build upon those foundations, at least in some areas. Sadly, the character progression system isn't nearly as extensive as those for the weapons. And this is the kind of thing that really irritates me on a fundamental level. It always annoys me when a developer, either on their own initiative or because a publisher was rushing them along, puts a lot of detail and sophistication in all areas of a game's mechanic except one, because then that one exception sticks out like a patch of green grass in a snowy yard. If you're going to have these very detailed skill trees for each of your weapons, I don't think it's too much to ask that the character skill tree receive similar treatment. Going back to the combat though, let's talk about enemy NPCs that you'll be fighting. There are a acceptable number of hostile NPC types that you'll get to encounter, including different variations of certain types, mostly revolving around undead enemies and certain animals. I say acceptable variety specifically because I do believe a lot more variety would have been ideal and would have gone a great way towards increasing the overall variety in the questing system and the player's overall open world adventures. New World has the same problem that Destiny 2 did at launch, except to be fair to Destiny 2, the team over at Bungie has at least made some effort in recent years to add in more basic enemy variety, as well as add in a ton of new bosses and elite enemies that randomly spawn in the open world. Here in New World, I've only run into a meager handful of elite enemies that I would hesitate to even consider calling bosses. And all of these were during specific faction side quests. 
I've never seen anything resembling an actual boss in the open world, which is a major disappointment. It's possible they exist somewhere, but in all my time playing, I've never run into one. Bosses seem restricted to the game's dungeons. As in other games such as Destiny 2 or Genshin Impact, you can queue up either as a solo player or as part of a pre-established group to make your way through one of the game's dungeons, which are hosted on their own server and aren't part of the normal open world. I've only played a single dungeon during my entire time in the game, so far during my time with the beta, as honestly I prefer the more open world side of it. Since I am currently playing the solo, and a lot of the fun behind playing through dungeons is doing it with your friends, not random strangers. But hey, at least they exist, so that's something. I'm not a hardcore MMO person. I used to enjoy playing MMORPGs, but after a certain amount of time, most of the games just started copy-pasting the same exact formula and design philosophy with little, if any, noticeable deviation or innovation. New World is arguably one of the only games in the past two decades that, from where I'm standing, has even tried to do something new. Also, to the game's detriment, the open beta currently has a ton of technical issues. There's an almost unbelievable amount of lag, and even reducing graphical settings doesn't do much to offset the server-side demand. While I expect a slew of day one technical issues, I do hope the New World team doesn't wait till launch to begin addressing these. I've heard a disturbing number of reports about GPU cards melting down because of the demand that New World places on them, to the point that I believe at least one NVIDIA-branded company has begun offering free graphic card replacements to those affected by New World's nuclear meltdown of, the, of their GPU. Also, just as a side tangent, but player level progression is actually fairly rapid so far, at least for the earlier levels. After my first two hours in, I was already level 8, and the max cap is 60. While I have noticed, obviously, that there is a constant increase in XP needed to level up, the leveling still feels a bit fast, and at the time, I wasn't even technically done with the introductory quests. While the tutorial itself only takes like the first half hour to complete, it's quite possible that over time, the developers may adjust the speed at which players earn XP at the earlier and later levels, so I'm sure the progression will be addressed at some point, but I do worry about players just being able to grind through and get to level 40 very quickly. But we're just going to have to see how that plays out when the game launches. One thing that does drag out the game quite a bit is the lack of mounts. This is an MMORPG, and yet the only way to travel here is either on foot or fast travel, which, as I've already mentioned, is a very inconsistent and unreliable form of transportation due to its incredibly long cooldowns. Ideally, you'd presumably want players to roam around the world as much as possible, something that is made much more convenient and much more rewarding by the addition of mountable animals or vehicles. Even if it's just a time-appropriate option like a horse that you can unlock at some point mid-game, or maybe a rideable wagon that you can share with other players with one player driving, making group travel a possibility, there are a number of options that Amazon could have explored but didn't. It's weird what things Amazon's team will put effort into and what they won't. It's a very selective method of development, and I'd be lying if I said I understood the rationale behind it. Another point I should have mentioned earlier is that the developers have included a really fantastic options menu. For most developers, when they hear that they have to spend some time working on a quote-unquote options menu, this to them just means slapping together a handful of control presets, maybe one or two for keyboard and one for a controller. Maybe if you're very lucky, they might include a V-Sync option or some kind of FPS limiter, along with bordered, windowed, and full screen support. That is not an options menu. It's just a page with a couple of options slapped onto it with less foresight than I and every 90s kid made when we were in kindergarten, making paintings or drawings where we'd always stick the sun in the top left or right corner because we were smart enough and lazy enough to at least find an efficient way to be lazy and get away with it. Luckily though, the team over at Amazon Games delivered a very competent options menu that is very extensive and very well organized into categories making it easy for you to quickly rebind whatever keys you need in order to optimize everything to your liking. And if there's one thing we can probably all agree on when it comes to the more hardcore MMORPG player base, it's that most of them are very specific about their control and hotkey options. And if you're one of those players, then you're in luck in this case. I could go on quite a bit and continue analyzing a whole bunch of other aspects to this game, because there is quite a bit to go into to the point that this video would have to be easily double its current runtime in order to cover ideally everything I'd want to address, but this is not a full proper review video. I'm not intending to do a super deep dive today. I'll save that for the release version of the game, 
and address some of the stuff I didn't get to today then. I was very concerned that New World couldn't possibly live up to the hype and curiosity that it's been drumming up for the past year or two, especially given its troubled development history. But for me, it met most of my basic expectation in a few areas exceeded them. What problems it does have, namely the technical problems as well as the rather excessive reliance on and repetition of certain quest types, and the overall lack of meaningful open world boss encounters, and the seemingly complete absence of world bosses, at least for now, can easily be addressed in post-launch updates. Amazon has the resources and manpower to do more or less whatever they want, so as long as the game continues earning money for them, I feel confident in their ability and willingness to not just walk away from it after launch, but instead keep giving players reasons to log in again and again and again over the long term. For now though, as ever, we're going to have to just wait and see. On that note though, that's where I think I'm going to wrap up the video for today. As you know, these are just my first impressions of the game. There's still a lot more I need to spend more time checking out, like the PvP side of it, before giving my final opinion of the game. But I'm going to save all that for my full review when the game comes out in August. As roughly a month will have elapsed between the end of the closed beta and the official launch on August 31st, expect my review to focus primarily on how much or how little the game has improved in that span of time, as well as spending some time critiquing some of the things I didn't get to in this video today. This is Warrior Dan signing out. Stay awesome everybody, stay safe, and peace out.